Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is really a pleasure to be here on a very historic day. As chair of the Niagara Frontier State Park Recreation Historic Preservation Committee, this is a day that we all have been waiting for. And I'd like to acknowledge a few of the people that are here. You're going to be hearing in just a few minutes from Niagara Falls Mayor Paul Deister, Rose Harvey, who is the Commissioner of the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. If you could see her face, she's smiling, so you know that she's happy to be here. Also, the President and CEO of the New York Power Authority, Gil Quinones. <laughs> Chairman of the New York Power Authority, John Comel. and President of the Buffalo Building and Construction Trades, Paul Brown. We are both fortunate and privileged to have a governor committed to protecting our state's natural green spaces and sprawling parkland, and that is Governor Andrew Cuomo. Bravo. For years, the governor has led the way, dedicating more money than anyone in recent history to the state's Environmental Protection Fund. He's worked tirelessly to provide vital funding for our state parks and ultimately strengthen New York's legacy of environmental stewardship. And the progress can be seen right here in our own backyards. In 2014, the governor began reconstruction on the southern portion of the Robert Moses Parkway to increase access to the waterfront, facilitate hiking and biking, and better connect local residents with the Niagara River. This project has been a game changer for the region, one that has finally done away with the outdated, underused parkway and finally allowed families and children to experience the wonders of Niagara Falls firsthand. It's been more than 50 years since the Niagara River was accessible from city streets, and we couldn't be more thankful. Through initiatives like the Buffalo Billion, we are truly transforming Western New York and continuing to make this one of the best places in New York if not the best place, to live, work, and raise a family. Now it's my pleasure to introduce a man who I think we've all seen time and time again championing Niagara Falls, the mayor of Niagara Falls, Mayor Paul A. Deister. Let's give him a round of applause. Thanks very much, Cindy. Good afternoon to all of you. It's always a great day in Niagara Falls when Governor Andrew Cuomo comes to town, and today is no exception. In fact, today is more than just a great day. It's proof that Niagara Falls has many great days ahead, this year, next year, and for many years to come. That's because we're seeing collaboration and support and vision from state government unlike anything we've seen in a long time. I've had the honor to serve as mayor of this city for just over eight years, and I've lived in this community for most of my life, and I can't remember anything like the support and partnership and visionary leadership we have today with Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's made Western New York a priority once again. He's bought into our vision and is investing in us and is helping us move forward with the things we care about most. And he's helping us to build a better Niagara Falls as a result. As you all know, one of our city's greatest strengths has always been our unparalleled outdoor spaces, from our parks to the miles of waterfront to the beautiful Niagara River Gorge, to the falls themselves, we have what no other community has. But for a long time, we lost it. For years, 
So many of those assets were separated from our people and our communities by the Robert Moses Parkway. I want to give an acknowledgement here to Allison Pasquantino. Are you out there, Allison? <coughs> Allison in the pink who moved into one of the neighborhoods adjacent to the section of Robert Moses Parkway North we're here to talk about today. I think that was in 2002, is that correct? So you've waited a long time, but you haven't just waited. Like many of your neighbors, you became an advocate for improved access to the waterfront. Well, Allison, today, your patience and hard work are being rewarded. Let's have a round of applause for Allison. It's simply illogical that we should allow part of what makes Niagara Falls so great to be choked off by lanes of concrete that were scarcely used. That's not how you build a city. That's why sometimes it's really great to have a former HUD secretary as your governor because he's someone that knows and loves cities. Everyone knew the parkway was a mistake almost from the day it opened, but decade after decade went by, and while everybody talked about the parkway, no one figured out how to do anything about the parkway. No one, that is, until Andrew Cuomo. At an auto shop where I worked as a college student, there was a sign on the counter that read, the difficult we do immediately, the impossible takes a little longer. I looked it up. According to the Home Book of American Quotations, that was the motto of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers during World War II. Governor Cuomo, I think that should be your motto because I've learned over the years, nothing gets you fired up more than someone telling you that something you know needs to happen, quote, can't be done. All right? For years, removing the parkway and taking back the waterfront for future generations was viewed as an impossible dream. Thanks to the governor's support, we're changing that. Robert Moses took our waterfront away, but Andrew Cuomo is giving it back. Whether you're talking about Buffalo or Niagara Falls, reconnecting our citizens to their waterfront heritage is going to be a major part of Governor Andrew Cuomo's legacy of accomplishment. Not since Frederick Law Olmsted created the nation's first state park in 1885 has anyone done so much to preserve, protect, and expand the park at Niagara for future generations as Governor Andrew Cuomo. $64 million is in the process of being invested to revitalize public access facilities from Prospect Point to Terrapin Point to Three Sisters Islands. The southern portion of the Robert Moses Parkway is being fundamentally reimagined to give people more access to the riverfront, and we're so happy to see that project almost completed. I see a lot of labor guys in the room. Anyone work on any of those projects around Niagara Falls? Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you. Governor, I don't think it's a coincidence we're going to cut the ribbon on three hotel projects within sight of that new park this year. And with the governor's support, I know the best is yet to come. Now, please join me in welcoming the man who continues to make dreams come alive for the people of Niagara Falls, the man for whom no challenge is too great, the man who is making the people's vision of a better future a reality all across the state, but especially right here in western New York, the great green governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it is a pleasure to be back. I tell you, you have the luxury of being here every day, but when you come back in and out the way I do, it is amazing the growth, the energy, the positivism that is uh, all throughout 
uh, the Niagara Buffalo region. It really is special. So congratulations to all of you who are really doing a great job reclaiming your community. Uh, first, yeah. I love your mayor. He's got the energy, he's got the optimism, and leadership counts. Leadership makes a difference, and Mayor Deister is a great, great leader, and he's doing a great job for the city. We thank Cindy for all the good work she does as the chair of the Niagara Frontier State Park Commission all the time. She's been dedicated uh, to preserving uh, the region's beauty. Cindy, thank you very much for what you do. And you have the state powerhouse team here, no pun, John Comell. Let's give him a round of applause. Gil Quinones and uh, Rose Harvey from Parks. Let's give them a round of applause. Before I start today on the good news, we have a little bad news that uh, we should acknowledge. There was a terrible situation in Brussels this morning um, that uh, brings back all sorts of memories for New Yorkers and is a sad reality now internationally, another act of suspected terrorism. And in some ways, this is now the new normal. You know how they talk about the new normal in terms of weather and extreme weather? Well, part of the new normal is this international scourge of terrorism uh, that can strike anywhere, anytime. We have seen it here. Uh, not just in uh, large, tragic situations like in 9-11, but we've seen it in San Bernardino, California. We saw it in Rochester, New York. Uh, so it is an international plague. And we want our brothers and sisters in Brussels to know that we stand with them. Their pain is our pain. We will remember them in our prayers today. Uh, we're going to be redoubling our efforts today here in this state uh, at our airports, our terminals, train terminals, et cetera, uh, as we have before. But uh, it's, it's so clear that the only solution, the only resolution, is going to be coalition building among our allies against those who would spread fear and terror, period. And that has to be the way forward. And we want Brussels to know the way the world came together for us after 9-11, we will never forget, we will always appreciate, and we will be there for Brussels. Whatever they need, they should ask the state of New York and we will deliver. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, it is so exciting to be here because, you know, for many years I would come and I would look across the falls at the Canadian side, and you would see all this construction, all this development, all this activity, and you'd say to yourself, why there and why not here? We're just on both sides of the falls. Why all that development and lack of activity here? And there was no good reason why. Money takes money to make money, and they had money, and they had investment, and they had energy, and they had partners, and we didn't. That's all it was. Same exact asset base. I would argue our asset base had the advantage. But they had partners who were helping. The partner who should have been helping, in this case, was called the state of New York. Capital is in Albany. They should have been more present and more active in Western New York. Doesn't make me feel good to say it, but that is the truth. Western New York was going through an economic transformation. Manufacturing jobs were leaving. It was the way of the world, okay. But now we have to reinvest and we have to transform into the economy of tomorrow. And you needed help to do that. And the state government should have been there to be of help, and it wasn't. We came in five years ago, we said we're gonna change the direction 180 degrees. And we announced the billion dollars for Western New York, one of my first acts. 
very popular in Western New York, very unpopular everywhere else besides <laughs> Western New York. It's one of those situations, you know, you think through, let me just do the right thing. You forget about the consequences. Billion dollars for Western New York. Every other region said, and what about us? But it was exactly right, because Western New York was one of the areas that was most disadvantaged, had paid the highest price for the economic transformation, and had the least attention from Albany. And we wanted to say a billion dollars because we wanted to say, we're serious about this. This is not just another government plan that's out there. It's just not another, I have a new plan for revitalization. People have heard too many plans and they stop believing. Billion dollars said, I'm gonna put my money where I, my mouth is. It was nice and simple, blunt and clear. And boy, it has been working. I mean, you see the development everywhere. The mayor mentioned four new hotels. $64 million is going into the uh, Niagara Falls State Park, thanks to Rose Harvey, who's doing a brilliant job. The reconstruction on 990, the Culinary Institute, the Maid of the Mist. You see all over now activity going on. I was in Buffalo this morning. It's unbelievable what's going on in Buffalo. Buffalo and Niagara Medical Campus, 7,000 jobs in 2003, 17,000 jobs in 2017. How unbelievable is that? <laughs> Buffalo, I saw something that brought it all home to me. I was in a car one day stopped at a light and I see these four or five young kids on a street corner and they're looking up. And I'm looking out the window to see what are they looking at. There must have been a bird or something. And they're just looking up and I see nothing in the sky. So pull up, I said to the kids, what are you looking at? They said, we're looking at the cranes. There were construction cranes in the sky. They had never seen construction cranes like the cranes in the sky. Why? Because you hadn't had that kind of development. You weren't building high rise. They had never seen cranes. So now the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus all over Buffalo, the, the energy, and just the way negative energy begets negative energy, well, positive energy begets positive energy. And there is a synergy, and people are believing and people believing is a very powerful economic asset in and of itself. People having confidence in the system. I was in the Clinton administration. President Clinton said to the uh, Secretary of the Treasury, Bob Rubin, how do we really get the economy going? Bob Rubin, with a very dry sense of humor, said, you have to increase consumer confidence. Clinton said, great. How do we do that? He said, I don't know. <laughs> The sense of confidence begets more confidence. People believe the economy is coming back. They do an extension on their house. They open a second business. They invest. They tell their children, stay here. Your future's here. Your house is going to go up in value. And you can feel that now feeding on itself. And it is a beautiful, beautiful enterprise to be part of and it's only getting stronger. Now, part of what we're doing is correcting past mistakes. Robert Moses Parkway. Sometimes we have great intent and we uh, execute it poorly. Robert Moses Parkway was not a good idea to be placed where it was placed. The mayor is exactly right. And then for a lot of years we talked about, well, really we should take up the Robert Moses Parkway. But it was said in that vein of, we could never do this, but we should take up the Robert Moses Parkway. But you couldn't. Why? Well, it's too big, it's too bold, it's too expensive. Uh, it's just uh, too ambitious, too ambitious. And part of my point was, there's nothing too ambitious for New York. We lost our mojo. We're forgetting who we are. We better look in a mirror. 
too ambitious for us. We are a state of people who were told, no, you can't, right? And we said, yes, we could. And that's part of bringing back Western New York's energy and growth. Believe in you. It's a highway. It's asphalt. It's concrete. We get a shovel. We hit it enough times. It cracks up. It gets loose. We pick it up. We put it in a truck. There's no more highway. That's what it is. So don't tell me we can't do it. And as a metaphor for, yes, we can. Yes, we can do big things. Yes, we can make this a better place. Yes, the future can be brighter. Redoing the Robert Moses Parkway does just that. Just that. We all knew it was a mistake, but it was there and for too long and nothing was done about it. And now we said we're going to come back and we're going to redo it. And we are. We did the first phase. Today, it's my pleasure to announce $40 million to do the second phase and complete the project. Now, it is great for the local community to have access to the river, which they were long denied. But it is also great as expanding the tourism, because tourism is the meal ticket here. That's what's growing the economy. And opening up that park and opening up that river is going to change the whole ambiance of the experience. You put that together with the other projects that are going on, the hotels, et cetera. We now have the Seneca Casino working well. It is a totally different day. We have found our way. Now we just have to keep it going. By the way, my suggestion on the Robert Moses Parkway, it's now a new parkway. It's a new day. We should rename the Robert Moses Parkway. We should make it a competition. We should put it online, let school kids come up with ideas. Uh, because it is a great, great metaphor, again, for the rebirth and for growing forward. And that's what we should do. It is working. What we are doing is working. And I am right now discussing the next year's budget with the state legislature, which is always a pleasure. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But in this budget, I have the most aggressive investment program for upstate New York in the history of the state of New York, $25 billion. And, and why today is important, because when you do the budget in that Capitol building, you're just talking about numbers on paper. What today reminds us is, it's not about numbers on a piece of paper. These are projects that can transform lives, transform communities, and these are investments. I never said I'm giving a gift to upstate New York. The billion dollars was not a gift to Western New York. It was an investment. And upstate, downstate, we're one state. We're one balance sheet. We're one books. We're one family. If upstate New York is suffering, downstate New York suffers. Invest in upstate New York. Get those jobs being created. And that is exactly what this $25 billion can do. And if the legislature wants to see, well, are we sure we're going to get a return on our investment? Look at Niagara. Look at Buffalo, look at Western New York, look at the number of jobs created, look at the unemployment going from 9.8% now down to 5.8%. Look at that job growth. Talk to our brothers and sisters in labor who are now working for the first time. Talk to the kids who are on the corner who never saw a crane. Keep investing in upstate New York. Let's pass that $25 billion, $22 billion in infrastructure money, roads, bridges, parks, et cetera. 
because you think you've seen activity yet, you think Niagara's done great over the past few years, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let's build on what we're doing. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you to everyone that's come today. Good news. Thank you, Governor, for making us believe in ourselves. Thank you. Have a great day.